Hi there, and thanks for joining me while I continue to work on my 1989 Toyota pickup. Over the week, I installed the last valve since it made its way here from Alaska. Because I had new valve seals in the rebuild kit, I decided to pull all of the old valve seals off, and before reassembling everything for the last time, I put the heads in the dishwasher to give them one good last rinse. After that, I pressed all the new seals on, and I installed all the valves for the last time. I also sprayed cleaner through all the oil passages in the camshafts to make sure they were cleaned out. And that puts us where we are today. With all of that done, we can now start the process of shimming the cam followers to the camshaft. Before I can install the cams back onto the heads, I need to measure all the current shim thicknesses. This value is needed for a calculation to measure the new shim thicknesses after I measure the gap. So there you saw me measure all the shims. Off camera, I installed the cams and torqued them down. We're gonna move the camera into the first valve and I'll show you the process of measuring that gap. So we're gonna be focusing on this valve right here. As you can see, the lobe is pointed away from the uh, valve so that there should be a gap underneath here between this polished surface and this polished surface of the valve follower. And these are the feeler gauges and they have a thickness that starts around one and a half thou and go up to 250 thou. So we'll start with the smallest one, which is one and a half thou, slide it in and see if it fits. This isn't how you normally do it, but if I slide it from this side, you can see the feeler gauge start to pop up in between the two. So that means that there is a gap. I move the camera to hopefully get a better angle. Yes, it's good. It slides in and out. So we'll go to four thou. Five thou. Then it does not fit. So for curiosity, we're gonna put the three thou and the one and a half thou together. So that's four and a half thou. And we're gonna see if that fits. Just barely. So now we take, and that is the second lobe that we're measuring. The second lobe was 0.0045 inches gap. So now that we have our gap, we take this other sheet that has all the numbers on it, and we know that the current shim is 0 0.1085 inches. And then the rest of the formula is adding that to the measured gap minus the gap that we're aiming for. And 9,000 is the nominal dimension for the specs. We do this calculation, and this equals 0 0.10 four inches, Oop. which is equivalent to 2.64. I know that a 2.65 millimeter shim is available. When I order them, I'll need one 2.65 millimeter shim to replace on the second valve on this side. Now that I've gone through the process on this first valve, I'm gonna go through and measure all of the gaps on the rest of the cylinders and then I'm going to enter all that information into a spreadsheet, have that do all the calculations so I don't mess anything up, and then get all of those shims on order.
the last valve that I did was the one that was bent and to get the valve to seal I had to take a lot of material off the valve seat. I knew that the, that would raise this follower up quite a bit. I did try this last night just playing around and I thought that nothing fit in there but I was able to sneak the one and a half thou in there so there is a gap and I was able to measure it and it doesn't get to two thou but it is one and a half thou. So I thought I was going to have to come up with a different way to measure that one since they were already touching, but it looks like there's a gap and I don't have to do that. So just doing a calculation will work for that one. Now that this head is done, we're going to switch it out for the other one and do the same process. With all those measurements taken, I can enter those into my Excel sheet, do the calculations, and get the new shims ordered. I'll probably be getting those parts by the middle or end of this week, so I'll be switching to working on a different part of the engine, getting that ready for reassembly. But I think I'm going to call that the end of this video. I made a lot of progress over this week, and I'm happy with the way things are going. As always, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.